In the far southeast of Tasmania, the Tasman Sea crashes against sheer cliffs and has sculpted one of its most dramatic artworks, a yawning chasm in the coastline ominously known as Devil's Kitchen. This gaping trench is approximately 60 metres deep, with steep rock walls that plunge to a surging cauldron of throffy blue water. Layer upon layer of ancient rock is exposed in these walls, each stratum telling a story from deep time. These cliffs are made of Permian Age siltstone, sedimentary beds laid down roughly 250 million years ago on the floor of a shallow sea. Over unfathomable eons, geological forces and relentless ocean erosion conspired to transform those marine sediments into the breathtaking natural amphitheatre we see today. What follows is a poetic yet scientific chronicle of Devil's Kitchen. From its primordial origins beneath ice-laden seas, through tectonic upheavals and wave sculpting, to the awe-inspiring chasm still evolving before our eyes. This is the story of Tasmania's Devil's Kitchen. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel, and if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. During the Permian period, around 250 to 270 million years ago, Tasmania lay near the polar reaches of the supercontinent Gondwana, and this region was under a frigid shallow sea. Fine mud, silt and sand slowly settled to the sea floor, accumulating in thick, flat-lying layers. In that time of ice ages, glaciers extended to the coast and shed icebergs into the ocean. As those floating ice masses melted, they dropped pebbles and stones into the soft seabed. These peculiar drop stones, erratics carried by ice, became embedded in the mud. Even today, geologists can find cobbles and pebbles within the siltstone that do not match the local bedrock, silent evidence of ancient ice rafting. Over millions of years, the continuous rain of sediment compressed the lower layers. Water-rich mud and sand turned to stone, cementing into the grey-brown siltstone that now forms the backbone of the Tasman Peninsula. By the end of the Permian, what had been loose sediment was lithified into solid rock, preserving fossil imprints of marine life and even those glacial drop stones within its strata. Crucially, these sediments remained relatively undeformed through subsequent ages. The region saw no violent mountain building to crumple or metamorphose the rock. The Permian beds of the Tasman Peninsula are essentially layered like a giant layer cake, still lying in gentle horizontal sheets as they were deposited. This is plainly visible in the cliffs of Devil's Kitchen. One can see the stratification, with lighter and darker bands stacked one atop the other in tidy succession. Each band is a timeline, a chapter of ancient earth, marked by subtle changes in grain size or mineral content. Some horizons contain coarser sand or gravel, perhaps from a storm or melting iceberg long ago, while others are fine-grained silts that settled in tranquil water. These flat layers would become the raw material for Devil's Kitchen, but it took additional earth forces to prepare the canvas for the sea's artistry. After deposition, the ancient sea eventually receded, and geological uplift gradually raised these sedimentary rocks above sea level. Over tens of millions of years, the Tasman Peninsula's bedrock was lifted and exposed as part of the surface of Tasmania. The Permian siltstone, once under an ocean, became dry land, awaiting the day that it would meet the sea again. These layers remained level and continuous, indicating the crust here was only gently warped. However, as the land rose and subtle tectonic forces acted, the brittle siltstone responded by developing cracks. Think of a cake that is slowly squeezed or dried out, a network of fractures forms. Likewise, the rock was broken by earth movements, forming a grid of vertical joints in the otherwise horizontal beds. These joints are essentially natural cracks running perpendicular to the layering, often tracing straight lines deep into the rock. They would later serve as crucial pathways for erosion, for they marked points of weakness where water could infiltrate and pry the rock apart. For long epochs, the siltstone lay in wait. Above ground, it weathered under rain and wind. But the most dramatic sculptor, the ocean, had not yet arrived at Devil's Kitchen. During the last ice age, the Pleistocene, global sea levels were much lower, and the shoreline lay far out on the continental shelf. The site of Devil's Kitchen was inland, high and dry, probably a forested cliff or hillside not directly touched by waves. This changed when the Ice Age ended, 
and glacial ice melted worldwide. Around 6,000 years ago, the sea rose to its present level, and the Tasman Sea finally reached the Siltstone Cliffs. The waves began to attack the base of the bluff, and Devil's Kitchen's dramatic transformation was set in motion. In geological terms, this was the moment when a slow story of sedimentation and uplift gave way to the sudden chapter of erosion. The stage was now set for the relentless ocean to exploit every weakness in the rock, using the fractures and bedding planes as lines of attack. Once the sea arrived at the foot of the cliffs, the powerful forces of coastal erosion took over. The siltstone may be hard, but the ocean is persistent. Each crashing wave can act like a hammer and chisel on the cliffs. Over the millennia since sea levels stabilised, the Tasman Sea has ceaselessly undercut and gnawed at the rocks, exploiting the fractures that latticed the cliffs. The process that formed Devil's Kitchen can be imagined as a sequence of dramatic steps, as the shoreline evolved from an intact cliff into a cave, then an arch, and finally the open chasm we see today. Devil's Kitchen as it now stands is essentially a former sea cave that has lost its roof from end to end. It is a long, steep-walled trench, open to the sky. The surging sea floods in freely, crashing at the base of the cliffs. The name Devil's Kitchen evocatively refers to the violent, boiling motion of waves in this rock cauldron after the ceiling was removed. In summary, Devil's Kitchen is what remains after a sea cave's full collapse. It is the final stage of this coastal erosion sequence. In essence, it is the Tasman Arch without the arch, a giant rock oven with the lid taken off. If you visit the area today, you can actually see multiple stages of this geologic life cycle along the coast. Devil's Kitchen today is a place of raw, elemental beauty shaped by dynamic forces. Its appearance, a rectangular trench with vertical walls, is a direct result of the rock type and the erosional process described above. The rock itself, Permian siltstone, tends to break along flat plains. The cliff faces of Devil's Kitchen therefore look like stratified walls, with stacked horizontal ledges and shelves, corresponding to the original sedimentary bedding. Some layers are a bit harder or thicker and form protruding ribs. Others, being softer, have worn back slightly, giving the walls a terrace look. This layer cake architecture is not only aesthetically striking, but also tells us that the rocks are flat-lying and underformed, a remnant of an ancient seafloor now turned on its side for us to inspect. The Tasman Sea's waves continue to charge into this chasm at each high tide. With a roar, water strikes at the back wall of Devil's Kitchen and explodes upward and outward. The force of these waves is incredible. With each impact, air is compressed into the cliff's nooks and crannies, only to expand with explosive force, prying the rock loose bit by bit. Sand and small stones carried by the surf act as abrasives, sandblasting the cliff base. This is how the ocean has eaten its way into the headland, and how it continues to deepen and widen the chasm even now. Thus, it's probably clear by now that Devil's Kitchen is not a static formation. It is still changing today. The same processes that created it have not ceased. But what does the future hold for Devil's Kitchen? Given enough time, on the order of thousands more years, it's possible that the chasm will widen so much that it simply becomes an open bay or cove carved into the coastline. The cliffs could retreat further inland as the sea continues to erode them. Alternatively, new arches or blowholes might form on the edges of the current formation if parts of the cliff face resist erosion longer than the surrounding rock. The exact path is hard to predict, but we can be certain the evolution hasn't stopped. Eventually new features will emerge, and today's Devil's Kitchen may transform into something different. But for now, Devil's Kitchen remains one of Tasmania's most awe-inspiring geological wonders. To gaze into the Devil's Kitchen is to look backward in time, imagining the Permian Seas that birthed the rock, and to look forward, realising that the scene is still being created by natural forces. It is a living laboratory of erosion and a monument to the patience of geological processes. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.